Winston was letting us know that the sheriff's office was in town. Spencer, good morning to you. <laughs> good morning. We welcome in Mason County Sheriff Casey Salisbury. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we heard over the weekend another terrible, tragic story in law enforcement. Yes. You have the uh, black uh, bar uh, bat, um, across your shield here this morning. You can see in the in the shot. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what happens in these types of situations. And you have just come back from another funeral procession as well, right? Yes, we just came back from Kittitas County Sheriff's Office uh, for the service over there. And uh, then you have another tragedy that occurs. Yeah. And uh, it's... It, 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 it's horrible, you know, uh, every, I, I think it, maybe it reminds people, maybe it doesn't, but every time you get out of that car to do something, whether it's daylight or dark out, we don't know what's going on, Sure. you know, in the car in front of us. And uh, this circumstance, it sounds like he was just there for a car that was uh, parked and blocking the roadway or something along that, that line and, and got out and, and, and was met with this. So another tragedy for uh, for all law enforcement and really it's a tragedy for for all of our communities when it's gotten to to, to get to this point so it's a brotherhood really of uh brotherhood and sisterhood of law enforcement across the state and the outpouring of support from family members to the families of the fallen is pretty impressive as well yeah you really um you understand that uh, when, when I, I guess when you're the, the one out there, I always tell people it doesn't just simply, it's just like when you see a, a trooper stand alongside the road and they're out there doing a traffic stop, you, you drive by and you hope everything's all right. You don't realize that when you're the one standing there, what those cars look like coming down the road next to you. Mm -hmm. When you're in this business, you realize what it's like to get out in the middle of the night, out in the middle of nowhere and go up to contact somebody and you understand what that, that person had to, had to go through, you know, to get up there. And, um, and and it's just different because you have a different understanding of what it, what it meant to be in that circumstance or to be there. So I understand there's always budgetary concerns and constraints. Uh, and oftentimes when you see that situation happen, it's one officer interacting with one car, depending on how many people are even in the car. Uh, over the years, have there ever been additional talks or ways to try to figure out how you can always have a partner with you in the car i mean sometimes it's there's oh, minutes and like there two person cars yeah you know in some of the cities they do that you know it's in the city units in the big cities um i guess it's always been less expensive to just stick one person out on their own and and just like even when you're out on your own do you have enough people out on their own that a second car can can be en route to your location on something like that and and that's why we always argue for enough staffing yeah and when you're understaffing and, and you know, it, it isn't in a save in every situation, you can't guarantee anything, but it, it certainly helps. It's very important. Talk to me too now about how, when the procession gets uh, scheduled and forthcoming officers from all across the state and even outside the state yes. probably come to these things. Uh, how does that, what are those this is a tough, this is, these are tough things to talk about, but what is that like for the folks who are there along the side of the route uh, that are watching the procession go by? And then I'm reminded of the images of inside uh, the Tacoma Dome during the Lakewood falling floor. off the Lakewood there. And uh, that, what do you and your fellow officers do to kind of console each other during those times? I mean, you, you always, you obviously know a lot of folks in law enforcement over your years. So when you interact with these people, even the rookies and you kind of just talk with folks, tell, explain. It's, you know, I think the one thing that I noticed, um, one of the many years ago, um, Pierce County deputy, John Bannon and Ola, it was that service. And it was, at, I can't remember UPS or PLU field house. I just remember sitting there and that was full of thousands of people in there and you couldn't even hear people breathing. It was that quiet. You could hear the fan running mm -hmm. in, a, in a place that big. It's very, very quiet. It's very solemn. Um, I would tell you also that when uh, the streets were lined in Kittitas County with their citizens out there, and that means a lot um, for us, I, I, I think we, we recognize that person, um, what's happened to that person, but we recognize that what's happened to that family. And that's really the tough part. And when you look at each one of these uh, 
folks, his most recent, uh, their young families, mm-hmm. and uh, right kind of in the height of their career, the beginning of their career, and they've left children behind in the family, and that's really tough. Um, Jeff, I would tell you that kind of an interesting uh, thing has come our way. Many years ago, uh, Chief Mike Evans, who's now our director, Director Mike Evans of Dispatch mm-hmm. and I, attended a training class, uh, uh, how do you handle these things in an agency? And there's an organization called Behind the Badge in the state of Washington that just does a tremendous job of coming in and assisting agencies. And there's a lot going on to set up uh, for services and coordinate all these things. And Behind the Badge has done that. And they have, um, uh, they do a tremendous job. Well, this last year, um, we were asked, got a phone call, asked if we'd be one of the pilot agencies um, to sit down with a, a training class for command staff on how to deal with these things. And we're actually going to be doing that here. Um, it's going to be hosted here in our agency and behind the badge will be in. And it's just unfortunate that we've had two of these now since we've accepted that to set up for that training class on how, how to deal with those things in an agency and for your community. So um, we'll, be, we'll be taking that as a training class in, in, in our office and we'll be hosting that for some other agencies to join us. But right now, the people that are put on that training you know, a two month period, or less than a month, I guess mm-hmm. you'd say right in there. Um, they've been very busy and we, we certainly appreciate them. And uh, I, I see tremendous community outreach in these communities uh, for these people, because you know them, people in the community know who you are, you grow up here. It's just been a really, it's been a really horrific deal. What are the types of resources for the family? You mentioned oftentimes it's a perhaps newly married or with young kids in the family. What are the resources available for the uh husbands of the spouses of the fallen officers and the kids and how often and how long do those resources are they available to the families well you try to make that family i, I guess most all of us would tell you that that family's never forgotten within an agency and and you, you you try to keep that memory with you all the time for that family and it passes on through time i think in cowlitz county I, i'm not sure on this but i think they said that this was their first officer and um uh, in a line of duty death. Mm-hmm. I think, I think they've said for over a hundred years. Wow. Wow. So any, any one is too many, but you remember those and, uh, yeah, you, you honor those people uh, during that time, their families. And there's organizations like, uh, many of us belong to, I think all the fraternal order police. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're an organization that if you belong to that, you're, you're, um, part of that organization. And during that time, um, there's, it's not that it saves any, not that it corrects anything, but there are different, um, uh, programs and insurances and things that come in to assist a family maybe with um, the kids' outlook for a, a college education and those kind of things that help uh, those funds help go into that. It's a real tough time around law enforcement now as well. Um, what are some of the ways just an average citizen other than showing uh, respect and uh, heartfelt thanks and prayers perhaps, but also what are some ways that just an average citizen can help either the families of the fallen or just continue to uh, share information on officer safety and things like that? Well, I think uh, supporting behind the badge is an, impo- an important one because the people that run that organization or, or most of the people that started that were uh, um, uh, two women that lost their husbands in the line of duty. And they realized the... Um, the value in having somebody else come in and help you through that time. And, and they've got some wonderful protocols on how to assist families and how to stay involved with those families. And they carry that on. And so Behind the Badge is a, is a, is a great organization that, that helps all law enforcement families to deal with these kind of tragedies. Um, i tell you the other thing is wonderful for us, and we talk about it for years, is we've always had our, um, um, when I came here with chaplains, and a couple of our chaplains have retired. We brought in our, our newest chaplain, uh, Chaplain Harris. We'll have to bring uh, Chaplain Joel Harris mm-hmm. on sometime. You introduce him. But you know, having those chaplains in your department to help deal with families and circumstances. There's all kinds of things going on uh, in in law enforcement days. And so everybody that goes through this, it doesn't matter which law enforcement agency in the state that this occurs in. Um, it affects us all the same. And that's why you say you'll see all the different agencies will be there. Um, I would tell you that uh, in Kittitas County in Ellensburg, when we were over there just um, a short time ago, the number of people that turn out um, is, is, is overwhelming, uh, support for the family. 
reminds the community does care. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you think you're on your own out there and, and those groups of people show up and each community you go to, it seems like it kind of brings them together for a while and that reminds that. But I also like to remind that, you know, every time we go into talk about what we need for staffing levels and things and for safety levels, it, uh, this is why it's important, um, you know, to have backup units and things there close by. I, I think it was a, um, a city agency was the closest to that deputy the other night to be there. And, it, you know, it'd be always nice to be able to go with a couple people each call. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but it, it certainly helps uh, when, there, when there's more than one of you at these things. Mm -hmm. I've always been a supporter of law enforcement and family, and all my closest friends are either in law enforcement or former law enforcement uh, officers. And um, there's just so much criticism of law enforcement, and I, I just I, I tip my hat to you guys, and I have nothing but respect. But people who criticize the most i really would like if they would engage in some of those i've seen reporters go through those trainings you know the exercises and stuff and people are so quick to judge and thinking cops are trigger happy and things like that when they go through those simulators and stuff they come out of that just totally white knuckled and like oh my gosh now i finally understand what it's like to be a day in the life of law enforcement I mean, most of us worst case scenario we have a bad day maybe sales are off you know someone ate your sandwich in the fridge you know just stupid things that we worry about with day-to-day -day occupations but it's one of the few occupations where you're out there and you don't know if you're going to come back to your family and that adds so much stress and uh, i don't know if the average person quite understands all that. it's really challenging you you mentioned that piece uh, uh, there's a uh, simulators that we use and we have had I know an agency that had a person being very, very critical, a person on the budget end of it being very, very critical about putting out uh, money for training time. And they had that person come in and go on that machine and uh, they made a mistake in every single scenario. They did the wrong thing every single time, multiple times. And that's why we go through those. Yeah, yeah. And it is challenging when you're out there. You don't know who's getting out of the car and those kind of things when you're, when you're out there. And um, it, it's, just, it's a tremendous challenge. The other thing I think that sometimes isn't thought about is that um, – um, folks in, in actually in any emergency services, but you can be, especially in law enforcement, you just get up the next day and you go to work. There's no, we don't get snow days. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't get those yeah. kind of things like other people do. And, and it's always when things are at its worst, it, people expect you to be there and they expect you um, to show up at their door. But at the same time, your family is at home during those times too. And you're, when you're out there and, and it's challenging, but sometimes it's going from one, uh, you'll be going from a very tragic call. Uh, some other type of the death in somebody else's family you go and you take care of that and the next call you go to and and somebody wants to complain about something to them is very very important you know somebody came by and threw some trash out by their lawn or something and they call just mad as heck because of that and 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 you have a person that just walked away from dealing with the death of a child or something and you know they they don't they don't care what <laughs> what you just came from, but you're supposed to be happy mm -hmm, and cheery mm -hmm. every time. And, and it's really challenging because in our business, most often we, we don't get called to things because everything is well. We don't get called there because it's somebody's birthday party. Yeah. You know, it, it's just one thing to the next. Sure. It's, it's always somebody's problem that, that we become engaged in. They ask us to make a decision. And most of the time, or many of the times in our, in our business, when there's a property line dispute or a domestic dispute or whatever it is, um, even, you know, depending on whose perspective it is, what call you make, you're always 50% wrong. You know, somebody's always not happy because they don't get it their way. Mm -hmm. And you're expected to be that referee in the middle. And so it, it's challenging. It, it, it's, it's really challenging. And we ask an awful lot. I, I look every day as I am probably one of the more senior people now <laughs> in our office, um, that the young people that are coming into us, at uh, some of them 21, 22 years old, that have to make a, a huge decisions tremendous high level thinking decisions on the spot or be able to deal with some tragedies that they, and they may not even have families of their own yet and they're making you know they have to show that element of compassion and those things in there we ask a lot of them and and um, sometimes a, a lack of life experience even at that age to handle those circumstances and overwhelmingly i would tell you overwhelmingly they do a great job they really do and so I, I want to make sure that we look at that for all the emergency service agencies. I know that it seems like when something not goes not well, 
it's usually a multiple agency response, you know, it's, uh, it's be a fire department responding with this, and Washington State Patrol, Department of Natural Resources, U.S. Forest Service, people that sometimes we don't think of, Washington State Parks. It's all the same thing, but we're all in the same, uh, we're all kind of in the same problem when something like that happens. And so um, I remember all those agencies that are out there with those people that are emergency service provided in each one of those uh, professions, uh, um, folks that are on aid crews and things that were there that night. I know oftentimes we're thinking of a law enforcement family, but you know, that aid crew person that was on there mm -hmm. that, that night assisting, trying to help that, that, that officer down, that deputy sheriff down there, you know, their day isn't any better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think, okay, now we're off on our own doing this, but yet what about that first responder that was there with that ambulance crew and that paramedic that was there and how, how their life went that day, or even the even the folks at the, you know, I've been in the ER up there and our, our folks up there do a tremendous job yep. and something happens, it goes tragic and, and they can't save that. It's not good for them either. It's a bad day for them too. So there's a lot of things that are affected in the community, but, uh, uh, you know, just keep, keep those families in mind, um, uh, especially, the, you know, the kids and the, and the uh, family members are left behind because that's who we really need to, to really be supporting, not just now for the rest of their life. So thank you. Tough topic to talk about, but important to discuss this for folks who uh, get a special insight to what happens there in law enforcement. Sheriff, sit down. Thank you so much, thank you. Uh, Casey. And it is the Sheriff Sit Down brought to you by our community credit union.